Microsoft, one of the largest tech companies in the world, has created three billionaires, but it also has created over 12,000 millionaires. That's a big number. In fact, now we have more millionaires than we ever had, largely due to the rise of the internet and globalization. But making money or keeping your money isn't easy because the world is changing so fast that if you aren't smart enough, you might lose your money in a blink of an eye. That's why an average millionaire has seven streams of income. You don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket if something goes wrong. You are doomed. So let's find out the seven most important streams of income. In 1997, a guy named Jeff Bezos filed a patent, a method for ordering items online. Instead of first adding your item to your shopping cart and then clicking buy, you could simply click buy. It sounds so simple that no one should have patented that. But for the last two decades, Amazon made billions of dollars licensing this patent to companies such as Apple. That's why corporations file for a lot of patents, even if they don't need them, because they could be a potential source of income. This is the real passive income. You keep getting paid after your work is done. But that also includes writing a book, shooting a movie. Secondly, capital gains. Capital gains is when you buy an asset such as stock or a property and then sell it for a higher price. That profit margin is your capital gain. Let's say you buy 100 stocks each costing you 100 bucks or $10,000 in total. The stock price rises to $120 and you decide to cash out. So your capital gain is $2,000. The tax rate is typically around 15 to 20% at best on capital gains on long-term investment and 37% on short term. And if you pay attention, it's really popular among the millionaires. Not because the tax rate is just 20%, but if you're smart about it, you can literally pay zero in taxes. The first way is super easy. Just don't sell your investment. Keep holding it. Even if you make billions of dollars, you don't have to pay a dime. But that might not work for everyone. You might have to sell some of your investments to have some cash on your hands. That's why there is a second way. Tax loss harvesting. It's when you sell an investment at a loss to reduce your tax bill. At first glance, it doesn't make sense. Why would you purposely lose money? Let me explain. Let's say you are a professional investor and you have multiple stocks in your portfolio. Your stock A increased by $300,000, which is great. But unfortunately, your stock B decreased by 25%. Your $200,000 investment now worth only $150,000. And let's say you want to sell $50,000 of your stock A to have some cash. Ideally, you should be paying a 15% capital gain tax. But there is another way. Sell your stock B first for $150,000 and buy a similar investment for the same amount to realize your loss. Since you have a $50,000 of realized loss, you can deduct it from your tax bill. So if you're selling $50,000 of your stock A, you can deduct the $50,000 loss. Boom, your tax bill is zero. You can't invest without having some losses. So why not use them to reduce your tax bill? It's much more complicated than this, of course, and I have oversimplified it and ignored a lot of details, but that's the idea behind it. Usually, it's not done manually, but rather through a computer with a specific algorithm that makes it much easier. Investors continuously sell their bad investments and reinvest the money back into a similar asset to realize losses because you can keep carrying them forward for the rest of your life. So when you make a capital gain, you either dramatically lower your tax bill or pay nothing at all. That's not the only income you get from purchasing a stock. Owning a stock is like owning a piece of a company, even if that means owning such a small percentage that it won't make any difference. And it's understandable because companies nowadays grow to trillions of dollars. And as one of the owners, the company has to share with you its profits as a form of a dividend. However, companies usually don't pay dividends even if they make billions of dollars such as Google, Boeing, Facebook, because they keep the profits within the company to reinvest them back. That's why most investors are concerned about the stock price and not the dividend. But companies like Apple do pay dividends. As of November of 2018, Apple paid shareholders a dividend of 73 cents per share. That's not much, 
but something is always better than nothing. Dividend income is taxed based on your income tax bracket. Most people would fall between 12 to 24 percent. However, there is a way to avoid those taxes as well, but we'll keep that for another video. Ordinary income, the most usual type of income. It includes wages, salaries, bonuses, and commissions. It's when you are directly trading your time for money. Of course, it has its limitations since your time is always limited. But that's not the only problem with this type of income. In 2018, the government collected $3.3 trillion in taxes, and more than half of that came from income taxes. In comparison, the corporate income tax only made 8% of the government's revenue, which means people with this type of income pay most of the taxes. Another 35% of revenue came from payroll taxes, which is supposed to be split between you and your employer to fund social security, medicare and so on. But research has shown that employers pass their portion of the cost to workers. So people with earned income pay 86% of all the taxes while billionaires pay almost nothing. In one way, it's the easiest form of income because you don't have to do a lot of thinking or take any risk. With some set of skills, you can find a job. That's why it's highly taxed. But it's not sustainable at all since if you lose this job, you lose your only source of income. Next, rental income. Rental income is probably everyone's favorite. You buy a property and then rent it out. It's mostly passive where you don't have to be actively involved in it. However, from my experience, it's much more time consuming than most people think. Tenants come and go, some stay for a few months, others stay for a few years, some take care of your property, others don't give a damn, some pay on time and won't get you a single problem, others are unnecessary headaches, so it has its own pros and cons. However, there is also the commercial property that you can rent out to businesses, which in some cases is a better idea. Theoretically, you can rent almost anything starting from your car to your phone. However, real estate is the most common one. Interest income. It's one of the easiest and simplest ways to generate income. It's more of a passive income where you are not actively involved in it. That's why the rate of return is typically much lower than other forms of investments. It's when you lend money to governments, banks or corporations in the form of bonds. The bank usually takes your money and lends it to someone else at a higher interest rate. It keeps collecting the payment from the borrower, then pays back your portion of the deal and pockets the rest. That's in short how banks make money. The government usually raises money in the form of issuing bonds. So when you're buying a bond, you're lending money directly to the government. And finally, business income. It's exactly what it means. The income you earn as a result of doing business, either by selling something or providing some kind of service. And this is probably the most important one among all of these types of income. Because with other forms of income, you can expect 5, 10 or maybe 15% of return and the job is to minimize taxes, but that only works when you already have some wealth. But with this form of income, you can have a thousand percent return just with a hundred bucks, especially when we have this thing called the internet. Of course, having multiple sources of income is great. If one of them fails, you still have many others running. However, it's also a big distraction. Managing one source of income is a full-time job. What do you think happens when you have multiple of them? So do not jump from one income to another. Put all of your efforts into mastering one of them first. And once you reach a level when you're earning enough to create another source of income with minimum effort, then move on. And if you give it a closer look, that's how people get rich in the first place. Just a little disclaimer, most of these things were oversimplified to make the video as short as possible, but I believe it's important to understand the different types of income. This is why the rich get richer while paying minimum taxes, while the middle class pays a 40% tax rate. Give this video a thumbs up if you have found this video helpful, it helps the channel. And if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell besides it. Thanks for watching and until next time.